right. Well, hello, everybody. This is a very important uh, video because we get to talk to Millie May. I am her daddy, Matthew, and this is my daughter, Millie, seven years old, and we're going to talk to her. I'm going to talk to her about uh, this very important thing in her life called baptism. Baptism is going to happen tomorrow, but there's been a lot of steps leading up to this very special day that we're going to get the inside scoop on and ask Millie how she learned about baptism, how she prepared for baptism, and what she's looking for most about baptism. Last week was a very special week for her mommy and I and her little brother Sam because we witnessed Millie make a profession of faith during a gospel-centered message. Our pastor, Pastor Dale Waltman, gave a beautiful sermon and message on the simple gospel, and Millie stepped forward and made a declaration of being a child of God and believing the words of Jesus. So she has been preparing for baptism, and last week was just a very big step, and even tomorrow is even a more public step in showing her family and friends uh, that she wants to be recognized and open and unafraid as a child of God. So we're going to ask Millie some questions. Millie, you excited about tomorrow? Yes. And uh, I thank you for joining us uh, today and sharing about these things that are on your heart because we'll look back on this moment, this special day tomorrow, even in, in this video, and see how you've been progressing and growing as a sweet child of God. So this is like step one, just talking about it. And uh, sharing your heart is so courageous, so bold, so uh, so amazing. So let's ask you some questions. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Millie May, how did you learn about baptism? Um, Where did you first learn about it? My two cousins, Jake, and Parker, they both got baptized, and I, and I saw it, and that made me want to get baptized too. That is also um, so. First off, Millie, what do you think it means to get baptized? Um, following Jesus and following His foot. That's that's perfect. What was what was one of the first things Jesus told people to do was to to get baptized. First thing he told them to do, and pretty much the last thing he told them to do before he went up to heaven. And you remember who who baptized Jesus? Um, John. John the Baptist. Ten points. Hundred points. Thousand points. That's right. John baptized Jesus, and so if Jesus is showing us that he himself needs to be baptized then for sure just like you said following jesus means we, we just basically do what he did so he if he uh runs a marathon we run a marathon if he tells us to forgive we forgive others if he says get baptized we get baptized and that's what you're doing you're already making uh a, a obedience uh to jesus you're always listening to him you're a great daughter you listen to mom and dad all the time and now we are handing you off to Jesus for you to do everything he says. So talk about what me and you and Pastor Dale did to get ready for baptism. Uh, we went to Chick-fil-A and we talked about it for, some, for a little bit. And then um, I had to draw verses and I had to draw pictures mm -hmm. and then that's all. Yeah, absolutely. So we just uh, basically plainly laid it out there for you in the kind of the five step thing about what the gospel represents. So can you, I haven't really rehearsed you on this, but what were those five things that you drew? Do you remember? What was the step one? What happened? How did Jesus come onto the scene? Oh, correct. You're right. Before Jesus was born physically, 
uh, it started it, it started in the it started in the garden and the snake. So what happened there? The mini snake. Sneaky snake. The sneaky snake. So what happened at that moment that we needed the Savior? What happened to Adam and Eve and God? Um, they decided to fall, um, trust the snake. That's right. So God made them kick out of the garden and they never lived there again. Perfect. Boom. Awesome. So we see that man and woman were separated from God because of sin, right? So who did, Jesus, who did God send to be our savior from our sin? Jesus, yeah. So he was perfect, and that's why he died a perfect death making a way. So go all old testament adam and eve out of the garden long journey to get to the to the point where jesus shows up and how did jesus show up uh, in a big kingdom with a big gold palace or where on the cross but where was he born where did jesus where was he born a little manger in a manger right so that was step two the fall just like you said perfectly explained the fall they followed uh, the liar, the deceiver, the trickster. Um, the meanie. The mean snake. And then Jesus showed up to be our savior. So that was when he was born. Then what? Then he went to go see John the Baptist, right? Then what did he do there? He got baptized. Awesome. Absolutely. And then everyone decided to follow him. Yeah. Okay. So we got Adam and Eve. We got Jesus being born. We got Jesus born I'll John the Baptist. Be right back, Daddy. We got a commercial break, looks like. I'm back. She's back, ladies and gentlemen. Millie Mae Simpson. Resources. What you got there? Alrighty. These are her personal Bibles. She's got two Bibles. I didn't even get a Bible until I was like 12, and I didn't even have just one. She's got two, and she's seven years old. She's even baptized. And I got three. She's a rock star. She's got three Bibles. She's got she's got a concordance. No, she's got a concordance and a commentaries. Four. Uh, four. Four. Okay, so this the Garden of Eden, Jesus, John the Baptist. Then what happens next? Um, he went to the cross and died. And why did he die? Because he saved. He wanted to save us. Preach it. Preach it, sister. Okay, so we got Jesus going to the cross, and every one of these paintings and drawings that Pastor Dale gave us, Millie would then pick out a verse from these books here and uh, draw one verse to basically uh, capture what happened in the moment. Um, so um, these great storybook Bibles have a great uh, short condensed story of the uh, of the verses and she picks out a verse and she writes it on the story okay so after Jesus what happens next three days later what happens um, he, did you say in the tomb? he rises up he rises up just like he said he was gonna do um, overcoming death because Jesus never lies. Because Jesus never lies. That is right. So he said he was going to do it. He overcame death. That way, that, so we don't fear death. If we die, we die. We all will die. And if we trust in Jesus like you were doing and be baptized and do what he says, then death is just a doorway and we will be with him forever. So he rises again and he's unstoppable, right? Talk about a, a hero. He is a hero. Okay, so then he walks on the earth for about 40 days afterwards telling people about his resurrection. And then what happens last? He rises into heaven. That's right. And so he's saying, uh, I'm going to go prepare a place for you. I will send the Holy Spirit. And you already have the Holy Spirit because you trust in him. And he says, I'll live in your hearts until I get back. And then we wait for his return. So... Millie May, awesome. Hey, listen, I want to read you some verses, okay? 
What's really cool, Millie, is um, this is not some type of like parent faith and child faith. It's one faith. Did you know that? That you're now part of the same faith is not something different than mine? So listen to these verses, okay? It says, as a prisoner for the Lord. Is it, okay? is it, is it bad to be a prisoner? If you did something wrong, you're a prisoner or you're in jail, it's not the best thing. But if you are a prisoner for the Lord, it means you basically are you're, you're following the Lord. You're, you're chained up to the Lord. And that's a, it's a good thing. So the Apostle Paul is writing this. He says, as a prisoner for the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. What's the calling you've received? Be a follower of Jesus. Be completely humble. What's one of our things we say? Be faithful. Stay humble. humble love all. all abide in him. him. So be completely humble. It means be slow to speak, gentle and kind, and don't boast about all about you, who you are. Be completely humble and gentle. You're gentle, aren't you? Be patient. Yeah. Wait for mommy and daddy. Don't 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 get on. Don't irritate them too much. But be patient. Wait for the right time to speak. Bearing with one another in love, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Do you want peace or chaos in this house? Peace. peace. Okay, here's, here's a verse right here. Ready? There is one body. Do one. There is one Spirit. Do another one. One body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope. One hope is that Jesus will save you, and he fulfilled that hope. When you were called one Lord... One faith, one baptism. Okay, so listen, this is the same thing that has been going on since John the Baptist. And when Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist, and the same thing you're going to do tomorrow is the one baptism. And that one baptism is basically one meeting. Nothing different. Nothing, no magical waters. Yeah, it's not about where you do it or how you do it. It's about the meaning of it. It's one meaning. And that is from death to life, showing others that you also will be resurrected, um, just like Jesus was re resurrected. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over and through all and in all. Okay, one baptism, one Lord, and that's the same Lord that we have, and your mommy and daddy commit to you that we will teach you and raise you up and try to demonstrate what being a follower of Jesus is all about. You excited about that? Who's coming tomorrow? Um, maybe and Papa, Oma and Papa, and All your friends and family. Father's Day. Father's Day. Couldn't ask for a better Father's Day. And Annabelle and Sarah Beth and... We'll see who else. Who's going into the water tomorrow? Old you. Old me and a new me. Okay, well, since you brought up that point, let's get a little deeper. Let's not hold me back. All right, Romans 6. Here we go. Millie May, we're going to read one more thing. Romans 6. Okay. It says this. Don't you know, Millie, that's what Miss Jessica over there, mommy, was trying to tell you. Don't you know all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? So tomorrow is about water and gulf breeze and stuff, but it's a spiritual thing. We therefore were buried with him through baptism. Going under, you're buried with him into death. You're underwater in death. In order, just as Christ was raised from the dead, did Jesus Christ raise from the dead? Yeah. Through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And that's what Mom is trying to say is when Millie goes under, she was baptized into his death. This, it's like, it's like when you go underwater, it's like you are going into the tomb, right? Yeah, and, and then, then you're right. But you, yeah, yeah. We, well, we couldn't hold you underwater for three days. It's a little too long. So right when you go under, you're coming right back up, just like Jesus did. It says, listen, we'll close with this. For we've been united with him. Do you know what word united means? It means like, like together, together. Yeah, like we've been united, like United States, all the states together. We've been united with him in a death like his, right? You will certainly also will certainly also be united 
with him in a resurrection like his. So, baptism means that we want to be like Jesus. We were united in how Jesus died. We died to our old life. Jesus was baptized. We are also united with him on the, on the back end, which means we also get resurrected like Jesus. That's what it's all about. So, when you think about this, this decision you made yesterday, you can always look back in your life whenever you start doing old ways, like maybe being bossy or sassy or maybe lying or something like that. And you can say, you know what? That was the old me. That was the old me when I went underwater. That's not the new me who I am now. The new me is gentle, humble, loving, sweet, and kind. So you got a new life already right now. And tomorrow you're just showing that to everyone else. You excited? I'm excited. You have any other questions for us? Mm, no. Well, girl, you're an ace. We love you so much. Let's pray for you as we close, okay? Yeah, bring your doll. Jess, you want to pray with us? I'll get these out of the way. All right, let me grab my, grab my hand. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful girl. Lord, the, the heart that she has now, although it's young, it's beautiful and it's sweet. And so whatever she knows now, we pray that she would just live up to what she has already attained in you. And that is to simply follow you. What, what a childlike faith. Somebody, Lord, that uh, if a child could understand, you wouldn't have talked so much about childlike faith. So we know and we, we know very well that she understands about what this means. We celebrate that she just has been stepping out so boldly in her faith and, and, and unafraid and unhesitant, not hesitant about what she believes. We thank you that we have this home to model this for her. We know across the world there's not a lot of homes where you can be so public, but we thank you that we can be public about you tomorrow and every day. So may tomorrow just be a representation of uh, the new life that she can be uh, proud about, she can talk about, she can know that it's the most important thing in her life is to follow you and she can be bold and brave for you and no longer living however she wants, Lord, but to always mold and shape her by your spirit to be the woman of God you want her to be and that she wants to be herself. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Big day. Bring a towel. It's going to be awesome. Celebrate with you. Love you.